the whatever that means, the star race in the family, mm. both men and women. Mm. Um, and therefore, um, this also makes it more difficult for them to achieve pregnancy when they finally decide to do so. Mm. And so the, probably that's probably the most important singular factor before we start talking about lifestyle. Mm. Which is that well, age is also part of lifestyle yes, anyway. Yes. So, yes. so, so probably we say lifestyle issues probably mm. are the biggest cause for men and women. You know, what, what are these lifestyle? Wow, you, know? Um, you know, in Nigeria now we're we're really joining the whole world. I mean, which is natural. Mm. Um, um, recreational drugs are becoming like commonplace. Actually, you can. One day I was in traffic. I was with my son, and I, I saw this guy in Lekki entering a very beautiful car in mm. the traffic. Mm. Two minutes after, I, he came down. So I asked my son, I said, look, what? Did you see that? Oh, yes, I said he's selling him drugs. Oh. It's that rampant now. Oh. It's that rampant now. So they sell drugs in traffic. They and But this also has effect on our reproductive system. Mm. Both men and women. Hmm. I see many couples. They come to me, and then when you start taking history, you see that the two of them, because now I think we think is a is an aphrodisiac. Yeah. I mean, it helps with sexual performance. Mm. Well, fine, maybe it does, mm. but be sh- careful about the after effect. Right. So I think those are some of the things, and then we are living more sedentary lifestyles. Mm. Everybody is um, getting chubby. <laughs> <laughs> no, you 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 you're very you're very right, and that affects also yeah our fertility, yeah. both men and women. Mm-hmm. Not to talk of alcohol consumption, yeah. you know. Uh, people are hitting the bottle like they say they are relieving stress. They are doing whatever, but you know what? Be mindful of your fertility as well, mm-hmm. because all these things have effect on fertility. Right. Not to talk of the work we do. Okay, there's some vocations that also they predispose people to infertility right, right you know right. so for example people who work in fire stations people who work in paints uh, paint manufacturing in, company. yes yeah so those are things that can even some vocations you know mm. expose us to infertility yeah yeah if you uh, stay too long maybe if you are cycling yeah. and increases the temperature yeah. if you stay too long on the golf course you know mm. And they've used the pesticides, and there's so so many ways that we can uh, pick up infertility all around us now. Right. Is there is there a place for a natural cause? Natural cause of infertility. infertility. Oh well, if you mean that we can inherit some causes of infertility, mm-hmm. sure we can. Uh, there's some infertility. There's some causes that you can inherit. For example, polycystic ov- ovarian syndrome in women can be inherited if okay. it's endometriosis can be inherited you know so those are some of the things that can be inherited and mm-hmm. so also in the man mm-hmm. because that's one other aspect that we're we're paying attention to but not enough okay because we, like we say all the time that men and women are equally affected when it comes to infertility mm-hmm. I probably even want to believe that uh, maybe men are more affected than women now but you know because why I'm a little bit um, hesitant is yeah. because we don't have national figures. We don't have, um, um, uh, what do you call it, community figures. What we have are figures that we get in clinics, which might be a little bit skewed because it means there's only people who can pay That's that right. we're seeing. That's we're not right. seeing the whole. So That's we're right. careful to deduce from such. But mm. what we're seeing might show that men might also be more uh, contributing more to infertility. Mm. In, in men, let's, let's narrow this down. In sure. men, what are the main causes well, the main causes of infertility in men still remain the same. Just like you said, some yeah. you inherit, mm-hmm. uh, some are due to uh, things like uh, that you acquired from your lifestyle. You mm-hmm. know, the good thing about lifestyle, why I keep talking about it, is because they are reversible things. Mm-hmm. Okay, most mm-hmm. of the time. So mm-hmm. if you sin no more, you are not. You probably you 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 some of it can be reversed. Can be reversed. But uh, things like trauma also, mm-hmm. but also. Sometimes infertility in men is a pointer to something more sinister, oh. like cancer of the uh, testes. You know, okay. when you see low sperm count, that's why we say that when you see a man with sperm count less than five million, you must investigate him. Mm. Take the opportunity to look at his testes mm. because you might discover something that 
and because if this is caught early also right, right. It, it has a good chance of surviving it right. so those are some of the things that we know that can also can cause infertility men not to talk of infection especially when they're badly treated mm. okay so mm. yeah mm. you know what we're going to do dr jay uh we're going to make this very very highly interactive so we will take calls we'll take messages as we go along if you're watching on facebook and youtube you can start dropping your thoughts now but let's get into today's um topic proper at what point can we say someone is experiencing a delay hmm nice question um and that question uh, has been answered by the world health organization oh. they say that if you are uh, less than 35 years old as a woman yeah. and you've been trying for one year then we can consider that there's something is wrong with you so we can say you have soft fertility or we try to call it infertility but they want to call it soft fertility and therefore you need to see a doctor to be investigated but if the woman is over 35 then six months after you've okay. tried, what, what we consider to be trying sufficiently is that you must be having intercourse two to three times in a week. In a week. Yeah. So yeah. if you have tried for six months without any form of contraception, then you should be seeing a doctor to find out why this is so. Mm -hmm. And of course, you'll notice the dichotomy in age because yeah. age is very important, mm. especially in women. What are the chances? If we talk about age, those below 35, those above 35. Yes, uh, those below 35. When you're below 35, actually the chances that you can be pregnant naturally in, in one cycle is about 20%. Mm. Okay. Uh, but what we try to do is that we like to make it attractive by making a cumulative chance. Okay. So we say that, okay, in about six months, mm. you have about maybe 50 percent chance of pregnancy okay in about a year you have about 75 percent chance of pregnancy okay. okay and in two years you have about 90 percent chance of pregnancy mm, indeed indeed that's about me um what are the symptoms well, yeah wonderful question the, the that's one of the problems that we have in fertility with yeah. infertility because most times there are no symptoms at all mm. the only thing that you experience that okay you've been having regular intercourse with your partner and she's not getting pregnant there is no baby bump mm. you know mm. so most of the time there are no symptoms but sometimes there might be some symptoms okay in the man or in the woman okay in the man probably sometimes you might see that um um, um the testes if you examine the testes yeah one of them is not fair so this could have it could have been born that way yeah. or it could have had an accident somewhere along the line right you know if, if you played football in school or when you were hit there mm. or you fell into a manhole mm. stuff like that could cause it in men um then also some men also have very reduced libido okay you know and some have erectile dysfunction before they even get near their their wives they are already discharged mm. in my dad might make it difficult for conception mm -hmm. to to take place mm -hmm. yeah but uh, also you you might see some men having breast yeah they have breast tissue like yeah. women yeah. that also might be a pointer to hormonal imbalance so mm -hmm. but like we said many people don't have any symptoms mm -hmm. okay. but in women irregular menstrual cycle is one thing that should make you to say okay fine is there a problem here? Mm. So sometimes women have... But when we talk about a regular menstrual cycle, yeah. some people think it's clockwork. Mm. That if I see my menses every 28 days, it must be 28 days. So when it's 30 days, they pick up the phone and they're calling their doctors. No. Okay. We say that normal menses between 25 to 35 days. So right. it, once you fall into that range, mm. then you're good. You're okay. Yeah, you're good. Mm. So um, some women have very much pain when they're having intercourse mm. okay and this might be a herald of other things so they should see the doctor pretty okay. Okay. quickly okay. if your menstrual pain is so much that disturbs you from doing chores you know there's some women once they're menstruating everything comes to a stop that's right such women also should see the doctor early because that that might be a pointer that, mm. to some problem so right. but apart from that I, I most like we said most of them most people they're just normal folks no symptoms at all mm. and uh, one thing i want to say here which nigerians say a lot which right. does not mean anything right 
the it only happens when they start trying to have a baby. They say sperm flows back. Oh, come on. That's not that's I'm, not I'm already seeing some comments. <laughs> <laughs> that's not an issue. Okay. Really and truly. Okay. Because um the, what I tell people is that what you see is that you know when you see the rocket now um, they, they they used to call it challenge Abby. right I don't know what they call it now <laughs> when it goes up okay yeah. what you see is the fuselage comes down when okay. it has attained a particular height okay that's what you see on the bed also what you see is the cement not the sperm oh okay, okay. so that's the fuselage okay. what made uh -huh, the sperm cells are leaving air cells so okay. they are able to move that's why we look at the motility of sperm they're mm. able to move and mm. go to where they're supposed to go to so don't bother yourself about what you see on okay. the on the bed sheet you have answered um, five million people's questions <laughs> <laughs> with that alone um i wanted to you mentioned a few things about the signs and symptoms concerning the men and i i see this question all the time how about you mentioned erectile dysfunction right but the other part of erectile dysfunction is how about a man who is dealing with quick ejaculation? Does that affect uh, fertility? No, unless it becomes very severe when he cannot even penetrate before he At comes. All. Uh -huh, mm. Before he comes, you know, then that that's that's troublesome. That, that's troublesome. Yeah, but okay. if it's just um, the what somebody was calling it, her husband in Dominido, if it's <laughs> If it's in Domini, do the, I mean, come on. You can still at your pregnancy. Yeah, okay. Uh, Saka, on, uh, by the way, if you're calling in, you can be anonymous if you choose to be anonymous. It's allowed. Um, if you don't want me to mention your name with your comments on Facebook and uh, WhatsApp and YouTube, please start with don't mention my name or start with anonymous so I can leave out your name while reading your comments. Uh, can infertility come into play after childbearing? And that that's one of the questions that I have. Like, at what point can you say that uh, a couple, they've been, they're experiencing infertility, even when they've had a child or two? Wonderful question. Because there are two types of infertility, what we call primary and secondary infertility. Okay. Infertility comes at any time in which a couple is trying to conceive and they are unable to conceive. Hmm. So even if you have had four, and you want to have number five, and it's not forthcoming, mm. and you try it for over one year when you are less than 35, right. it's still infertility. Fantastic. That's very um, um, straight to the point. And this person wants to know, I mean, you've mentioned the age factor in women. How about the age factor in men? Is there anything like that? Yes, there is. But uh, the, the truth about the matter is that when it comes to reproduction, women are more important than men. What we only do is donate DNA and we're just like lazy drones <laughs> <laughs> after that. So <laughs> so that's why it's so age is so important in the women because mm. the mat genetic material that right. forms the baby right. comes from, from them, also from us anyway, right. but more from the women. More from <clears> the women, <throat> he says. We're going we're to... Uh, so men yes. have what some people call andropos but it's quite different from menopause and women menopause means you have run out of eggs okay andropause just means that there's some changes in your sperm does not mean you can't get a woman pregnant oh yeah but the chances that uh, probably congenital abnormalities will be higher in the baby so this sets about 45 in men when sperm ch there's some changes in the sperm parameter so it takes longer for them okay. to impregnate their partners no matter the age of the partner even if she's 20. Yeah. It's going to take longer, and the chances that the baby will have mm. congenital abnormalities mm. might be higher. Indeed. Lagos, let's go to break. It's a short break. When we return from this break, we'll take more of your calls. Um, you can drop me your 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 questions on Instagram as well, at Nigeria Info FM Lagos. I'll, I'll take them. Dr. Abayomi Ajayi is still here. I'm Sheriff Quadri. We're back in a moment. <music>
Health's Lagos State Health Management Agency, Rashma, has designed an affordable and quality healthcare scheme for Lagos residents. In Lera Eco, at your convenience, you can have access to antenatal, delivery, immunization, management of hypertension, diabetes, and other illnesses, family planning, and basic emergencies. Register with Ilera Eco branded agents and at the nearest Ilera Eco branded outlets. Pay 40,000 Naira annual subscription for a family package or 8,500 Naira for an individual package and start to experience peace of mind. For more information, call 0700 Ilera Eco or 0800 Ask Lashma or visit www.lashma.com. Ilera Eco, affordable and quality healthcare for Lagos residents. Memories wherever you go with all day roll on. Also available in spray. up your Hollandia yogurt Christmas pack yet? Get yours today in stores near you. 99.3 Nigeria Info, your number one station for talk. Let's talk. This is Morning Crossfire on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Welcome back to the Morning Crossfire here on Nigeria Info 99.3. I'm Sheriff. Quatri. I have Dr. Abayami Ajayi, the Chief Executive of Nautical Fertility Center, um, on the show this morning. And we're talking about um, delay, the symptoms, the signs, and um, possible solution to it. Uh, you can join the conversation right now, 0700-993-993-993, and 01465-7190. That is 01465-7190. You are very, very free um, to be anonymous if you choose to be anonymous. Let's get some calls in. Good morning to you. Hello, good morning. Good morning to you. Anonymous. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, please. I want to know. Uh, I, if the fallopian tube is blocked, is two fallopian tube. If they agonize that it is blocked, okay. Is there any chances to get pregnant again? Okay. All right, anonymous. Great question, um, Mr. Anonymous. Now, if the fallopian tubes are blocked, the chances that you can get pregnant naturally, I'm sure that's what you're talking about, mm. naturally is very slim, almost almost Not approaching there. zero. Mm. Uh, but um, so, And that's why we do IVF. Okay. The best treatment for such a person will be IVF. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure we'll also come to that when we're talking about treatment. That's interesting. I'm seeing a comment here um, that says, my last child is seven years. I'm not on any contraception, uh, contraceptives and also sexually active, although I'm in my 40s. What can be done, please? Uh, that's uh, You know, we talked about age. Mm. Um, let me tell you some things. Yes, um, when you're in your 40s, mm. It's not that you cannot get pregnant, okay? But even when you get pregnant, she's been trying for seven years, so the chances that you'll get pregnant naturally mm, approaches zero to it's less than 5%. Mm. Now, but that's not even the news. The okay. news now is that even when you get pregnant, mm. the chances that you will make scary is higher than the chances that you have a live birth. It's more difficult to get pregnant. The chances now that you will miscarry is higher than you have a life bar. So those are the things that we consider in this kind of... So this person should be seeing mm. a doctor to okay. see what are the uh, options that are available, available to her if she really wants to have a baby. Mm. Uh, this person wants to know if there is any connection between masturbating 
and infertility in men and women? I think there are so many naughty boys out, <laughs> out there. There is no program that I have that I won't get this question. I was <laughs> no. The answer is no. There is no connection between fertility and masturbation. Okay. Uh, there is also this question about um, if um, frequent intercourse can reduce the quality of sperm if you're trying to conceive. Well, yes and no. N uh, what we because it depends on what you mean by frequent. Yeah. You know. For some people, if what we recommend is that at least maybe have sex two, three times a week. Okay. I don't know. For some people, that's frequent. For mm -hmm. some people, that's not. That's you know? not. That's yeah. right. That's what right. we try to, if you are faced with infertility, what we try to do is like give you enough, just a little bit chance of the alternate day thing mm -hmm. so that you have some time to recoup. To replenish. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then before, but definitely if everything is okay yeah. it does not have any effect it does not have any effect okay let's take another call good morning to you yeah hello good morning good morning to you yeah okay good morning Sherry. my name is anthony welcome anthony welcome and good morning to dr jaito morning anthony okay just the questions i want to ask the pre the way we hear about polycystic ovarian syndrome these days has it always been like that or is it that information gets around more easily these days? Hmm. Then, I'm sure you're familiar with these myths we have around of of watery sperm, toilet infection, this and whatnot. And people really believe them so much. And an example is, there are many women who have been diagnosed of PTOS who have never been sexually active before they got married. Hmm. So... Hmm. Speak to this. Many people say, okay, it's a toilet infection. You got it from the toilet. Mm. You got it when you were sharing clothes with your sister. Can you just so sp speak to this thing about PCOS? Why, mm. How we hear? Has it always been like that? Or And also these, these myths we hear at the bus stops and everywhere. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful questions. Uh, PCOS, okay, it's always been like that. Okay. I think we just woke up to see for so many reasons. Mm. Um, information sharing, just like you said, is easier now, right. even with doctors. Right. I, I remember a few days, years ago when we talk about PCOS, even doctors were arguing then. But now oh. everybody knows that there is something called, in fact, there is an overdiagnosis of PCOS. Mm. Because PCOS does not just mean having polycystic uh, uh, ovaries on scan. There are other things that you need to look out for. So it's more we're more flippant with PCOS now, mm. definitely. But also, the scanners we're using now, yeah. the resolution so much, much better than what we were using 20, 30 years ago. Mm. And then now we're also doing transvaginal scanning, which shows so many other things which we were missing before. So I think it's just a plethora of reasons why PCOS is there. Ignorance is a part of it anyway, because some, some are not PCOS. They just... Uh, if for many young girls, if you scan them, they will have polycystic ovaries because they have yeah. many follicles in their ovaries, and right. that it looks polycystic ovaries, right. but that's not polycystic okay. because other things are involved to diagnose polycystic ovaries. Right. Now, what is palm toilet infection? These are I'm glad you call them myth mm. because that's where the realm to which they belong. Okay. You cannot talk about what is palm because palm cells, like we said, they are living cells mm. they can only be seen under the microscope mm. so what you are seeing is the semen which like i said is like the fuselage so uh, so you cannot tell me that you have what is palm or anybody mm. say that you have what is palm mm. the laboratory has to be involved to see what the quality of the spam cells really are mm. toilet infection is another wonderful myth that has refused to die right um because actually what you can contact from the toilet are fungal infections okay they have no uh, impact on fertility. Fungal infections make a lot of noise. They cause itching and irritation. Right. But they don't go beyond the vagina. Hmm. Your reproductive system actually is above the vagina. Right. So the, it does not affect fertility per se. So, but people talk a lot about toilet infection. It's yeah. easy that everybody uses the toilet, so hmm. it's easy to lay blame to it mm. and because most people don't even investigate yeah they just assume that th that must be the cause of their problem right so i think the what i can say from anthony's mm. submission mm. is that p 
people should see doctors. Mm. Stop making the, uh, diagnosis on your own. I, I'd like to extrapolate something from Anthony's um, second question about toilet infection. Is there anything like toilet infection yeah, or yeah. they are just STIs? Yeah, no, they, they, they are, there can be toilet infection. Mm. That, that's what I say is a fungal infection right. most of that, the time and has no impact on mm. uh, fertility. Because it's almost like we, we mix sexually transmitted infections with toilet infections or are they the same? They're not. You know, you just said it. One is toilet, one you need sex. Right. So <coughs> the sexual, uh, sexually transmitted infections are more than the toilet infections. Right. You know, toilet infections are usually just fungal in nature. Right. With the sexually transmitted, you can have fungal, you can have bacteria, boy, you can boy, have boy, virus. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's take this one from Anonymous on WhatsApp. It says, uh, the person says that they can can a man you mean with um premature ejaculation be able to impregnate a woman i think you've answered that question already mm. yeah yeah as long as there is penetration exactly mm. okay let's go back to the telephone then good morning to you hello hello good morning good morning to you uh, please can i remain anonymous that's fine that's fine okay thank you very much Good morning, Doctor, and Happy New Year. We should the very same. Thank you. Yeah, I have that three questions. One is, I have a brother, uh, after getting married, and uh, no, they couldn't achieve conception. He went for the test, and he was declared uh, sterile. And... Uh, oh. Do try and call us back if you can. We lost that call. Yeah, that was painful. Hello, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good yes, please. Good morning. Good morning. I have two questions. Okay. This is an anonymous. That's fine. Can you hear me? Yes, Please, we can I hear want you. to know the cause of a woman in her foot in her foot is not uh, of looking well. Not of looking well. Hmm. That is one. Then uh, uh, can a, a man with a watering span give uh, to a pregnant woman? Okay. All right. Thank you for the question. Um, I will take the second one first. Okay. Thank you for being anonymous. But that means you are not listening to us. Yeah, that's what it means. Because uh, <coughs> I've addressed this watery spam thing. Please let it go to bed. You cannot evaluate spam by looking at it. So there is nothing like watery spam. Let the man go and do a spam analysis mm. in a laboratory. Mm -hmm. That's when you know whether there is anything wrong with the sperm or not. Right. Now, for a woman over 40, I think we almost said the same thing before. Now, let me state some th things. A man, a woman over 40 can reach menopause, mm -hmm. and it is normal. Okay. We say premature menopause when a woman reaches menopause before the age of 40. Mm -hmm. So when you're above 40, you're actually already knocking on menopause. So... The best that you can be will be pe perimenopausal. Mm. So mm. it's around you're hovering around yeah. menopause, yeah. <laughs> and for some, they actually are menopausal. Yeah. So when you're trying to get pregnant at age forty, really mm. and truly, it's difficult. Mm. So ovulation, yeah, I'm not saying that some people don't just get pregnant like that. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like you 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 cross um, Ikorodu Road blindfolded. Mm. It's possible. You can do it. But don't try it again. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so yeah, it's possible. Yeah. But the chances are, if you know what the risks are also, you want to, as much as possible, try to achieve pregnancy before age 40. So yeah. it's not unusual for a woman over 40 yeah. not to be ovulating regularly. Mm. If she's ovulating regularly, she's lucky. Okay, okay. Well, that's interesting. We'll take one more call before we go to the options available. Um, hello, good morning to you. Hello, good morning, sir. Good morning. Yes, I would like to remain an anonymous. That's okay. Yes, please, I want to ask the doctor. Mm. Is it normal for a woman that is pregnant to be seen discharges? Though we're told in the hospital that it's normal, but the discharge is not smelling, it's not itchy. Just normal white discharge, not colored or maybe pink, um, greenish in, in color. Another thing, could those uh, the discharges, can it affect the baby? Mm. 
during delivery or mm. even during the pregnancy. Okay. Like, can it lead to a baby's death? Okay. Something like that. I just want to be sure of that. All right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think that's. Uh, I got the. I got the gist okay. with your second question. Okay. Yeah. Um, the doctor, because the doctor had already told you that is normal. Mm. Okay. You can have increased vaginal discharge when you're pregnant because your estrogen level is higher. Mm. So as long as you've said it is non itchy, it's not smelly, then it's 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 great. It's okay. Now, let me assure you about the baby. The baby is well protected from the vagina mm-hmm. until the time that you are delivering. That's when it has only com- any communication with it. And even the water has to be broken. Yeah, first. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. So the God in his infinite mercy has protected the child so much that you don't need to worry about all this. Mm-hmm. Except when the, the discharge is due to uh, infection, especially... Mm-hmm. Those days that uh, gonorrhea used to be rampant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dr. Jai, um, I would um, rest a bit from the calls and the messages. Let's talk about, because people are waiting to hear the options available to them. What are these options? Thank you so much, Sheriff. Yeah, the, the first thing that I will always say is that people should get a good um, the diagnosis to know what is wrong. That is when we can tell them what the options available are. Yes. And so the first thing is an, a proper assessment. Okay. For you to have a proper assessment uh, when you have infertility, four tests need to be done. The first one, the semen analysis. We need to know what is the man carrying, you know. Is he, is he, is he shooting blanks? Wait till you carry, wait till you carry. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> is he shooting blanks or they, they're real? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We need also to see, because we know that the commonest problem with women is that the tubes are blocked. We need to be able to see that the tubes are open just like the, somebody asked us during this, yeah, uh, yeah. the course of this program. So yeah. we do an x-ray called HSG okay. or sometimes some people do what they call laparoscopy. Okay. Now, if you do that, then the third thing we want to do is that, is this woman ovulating? Mm. Does she have a good x stock? So we do some blood tests to show what the egg stock is like. We call it ovarian reserve. So okay. And then the fourth thing is that because there are a lot of fibroids in this environment, we also do a scan to be sure that's where we can pick up things like polycystic ovaries, yeah. that we can pick up whether there's a fibro sitting where the baby should sit, mm. so that we get a whole picture. So once those four tests have been done, then we can say that you are fully investigated because from that we can see about 85% of the causes of infertility. Mm. And that now leaves also this 15% which we call unexplained infertility. Mm. All right, that's We have done those four tests. Yeah. We cannot find out why there is infertility. So we, in our confusion, we leave it that unexplained infertility. But there is treatment for, for that as well. Okay. So now it, when we have seen this is what, when we now decide that, okay, fine, what is the best option for this okay. couple? So it's like tailor-made for the couple. Mm -hmm. Now, so we start from the most basic. Mm -hmm. If you qualify for what we call intrauterine insemination. Okay, maybe I should say that even some people don't even need any intervention. During the course, you might see that they're not having sex regularly as they they should. Mm -hmm. Or they have some kind of notion with the man says is once a month or something and the timing is wrong mm. so for some you might see that for some you might just prescribe drugs alone and see that okay fine for because we have seen that probably she's not ovulating yeah then the the other one is that we can do what we call intrauterine insemination okay. which is just preparing the sperm we have seen that the sperm they're they're good mm. um the the tubes are open. Okay. Okay. But the where we, what is not happening is that they probably are not meeting in a comfortable environment. So okay. we do we take the sperm, prepare them, make them get the best out of them, mm-hmm. and then we shoot into the. I'm sorry, not we put it into the uh, 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 the reproductive tract of the vagina of the actually into the cervix of the woman okay. to cut short the distance that the sperm need to. Because Travel. you know that fertilization takes place in the tubes. Mm. So the nearer we can put it into the tubes, the yeah. better. Yeah. So we, we, we do that at the time that the woman is supposed to be ovulating. Mm. So we have to see when she's ovulating. Right. And right. then 
if that does not work or they don't qualify for it because we see that this man sperm is not up to par mm. or we see that the tubes are not open then you don't do intrauterine insemination mm. for such couples okay so we go straight to ivf okay now there's so many variants of ivf now it's just like you say i want to drink coke mm. it does not mean there is the typical cook that is in yeah. front of you so yeah. there's so many things that are called ivf now that the it's an umbrella okay so but the conventional ivf is only for people where the sperm count is okay, okay. for example the tubes are blocked mm. okay mm. but when the sperm count is not okay like we said that we having a lot of it right. in this environment you know we did a study that we saw that 12 percent of our men don't even have any sperm count at all zero 12 percent 12 12 ah that's very scary now now what we say now what we have seen now also but you know what i say some sometimes that we're careful to throw this figures around yeah because it is not community based mm. is but that's the experience that we have we can also throw it away yeah okay yeah. what we see now is that every for every two spam samples that you get one of them will be abnormal is that bad wow <laughs> wow <laughs> so um so um that's why f now you see that a lot of IVF clinics are doing what we call ICSI okay. or intracytoplasmic sperm injection. What this means is that that can only be done in the laboratory where you pick one sperm and inject it into one egg. This requires a lot of training. Mm. And the experience of the clinic that you're using matters a lot. Yeah. The experience of the embryologist matters a lot. Mm. So, And then we can do that for when the sperm count is bad. We can do it from when the sperm count is just low yeah. to when it's severely low. Mm. Okay. We've had s results from people who are, say, 300,000. Instead of 15 million, mm. their sperm count is 300,000. So, okay. so it's possible to do that. But yeah. because of that, because the sperm count keeps going down, mm -hmm. we've seen so many other methods have been brought into four. Okay. Okay. So we now we have some spin-offs from ICSI, mm -hmm. like IMSI, like PIXI. They are things that we now do to help with men who have poor spam, spam count. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I want us to dwell some more on blocked fallopian um, tubes. Um, can anything be done to open up the tubes? <laughs> Million dollar question. <laughs> you know why? 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 I smile is this because. We still see some people in 2022 doing hydrotubation. Mm. They, they go and flush the tubes. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's as counterproductive as it can be. And I'll explain to you why that is so. Yes, please. The way the tubes are made is that, you know the function is that they transport the, sperm, uh, the egg mm. and then also the sperm. Yeah. And then they, transfer, they also transfer the fertilized egg back into the uterus. That's right. So apart from being open, they also have fine air-like things, structures in them, which mm. helps with to propel whatever they are transporting. Mm. So um, when they are blocked, it's just look at your sink mm. in the kitchen. Mm. When it's blocked, what happens? Mm. The water refuses to flow, so That's you have right. a flow back. That's right. The same thing happens when the tube is blocked, especially it's been blocked for quite a while. Mm. So there's a flow back. The first thing that happens is because that space is limited, yeah. it makes the tube to become bloated. Mm. And that's why we see it on HSD. It makes it to become bloated. And because of the pressure that is exerted on the muzzle of the tube, mm. it expands. Mm. The first thing that it sacrifices are those air-like things. Those are the first things that are destroyed. Right. And that's why the problem we had even with doing tubal surgery we can open the tubes, but those air-like things we cannot reconstruct. Hmm. So imagine you now trying to flush that kind of tube open. In the first place, most of the time, it's like, also go back to your sink in the kitchen. Yeah, It's like you have bone obstructing the flow. And then you start pouring hot water in it hmm. and using your plunger to, what are you going to do? Hmm. The plumber has to come there to, to open it up. Once the, it's a yeah. solid thing. So. Yeah. The same thing also. So sometimes we've even seen people dying from that. Oh. Because now the 
the fluid has accumulated the back flow has accumulated over a lot of uh, many years mm. once there is stasis there will be infection mm. so that fluid is already infected mm. and then somebody in his wisdom comes to flush it open and in the process is very skilled at it so he, he actually ruptures the tube <laughs> Hi. Hi. and so you now have that fluid going into the abdominal cavity and so you have terrible infection mm. and so because you didn't do anything, you yeah. start having abdominal pain, you yeah. start using analgesic, meanwhile, infection is festering. Mm. So that is one thing that I don't think anybody should be doing now. Okay. And we've also spoken about tuba surgery. That's right. Very few tuba blockages are amenable to surgery. So they need to be selected. And for you to do that, you need to do a laparoscopy to know. So at the end of the day, that's why tuba surgery is becoming more and more... Uh, a cake. Okay. So, um, the best way to treat tuba blockage in 2022 mm. is IVF. Mm. Fantastic. Um, we're going to take one call, then we'll go to break. When we return, um, because I have loads of questions here for you, and we can't take everything, um, it will probably give people your information, if you don't mind. Um, to try and reach out to you for any further questions they have. But let's quickly see if we can squeeze in uh, one call before we go to the uh, final break. Good morning Hello? to you. Hello? Good morning to you. Hello? Good morning. We can hear you. Oh, you can't hear us. Uh, Nigeria Info, good morning to you. Good morning. Yeah. yeah, hello. Good morning to you. Can you hear me? Oh, wow. That's gone. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Okay, that's gone. Let's take one after this. Okay, this is not even going through. We're going to try the last time. Morning to you. Hello. Good morning, morning, Sheriff. Yes, good morning. Good morning, doctor in the studio. Morning. Yeah, my question, um, my, um, my name is Ayo. Welcome, Ayo. So, my question is that, uh, what causes a woman, when a man play with a woman, then when the woman gets up, See that everything will now uh, flow back. Is it that the uh, fallopian tube be blocked? Then, because uh, I have a friend that is they've married up to a year plus now, mm. and they have not been able to conceive. Okay, thank you for your question. I think we've treated this. Yes, we have. Ayo, I don't know what place is it. The National Stadium <laughs> or <laughs> UAC? <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we treated this that this is not an ab abnormality at all. Yeah. That's not the cause of the mm. failure to conceive. So they should see a doctor. Okay. A uh, quick one, um, Doc. Uh, someone said, can genotype cause childlessness? No. Genotype cannot cause childlessness. But um, the, the I think that's a big question that um, the talking about genotype because we, that's one of the problems that uh, IVF actually solves you know you know we say that two AS, AS should not marry so that yeah. they don't have SS mm. why is I still believe that but yeah. IVF has a way that can also circumvent that yeah uh, but of course it's a very expensive uh, venture mm. but so I, I think maybe we'll we take that after I, I don't yes, know when we return when we return, when we return. thank you yeah, let's go to break, Lagos. Let's go to break. When we return, um, we'll begin to wrap up on the show this morning. Stay here with us on Nigeria. Info. Are you a professional, a service provider, or an artisan? Are you looking to grow and expand your customer base? Then follow these three easy steps. Step one, download the Kaya Help Partner app. Step two, create an account, enter your profile, and update your guarantor's details. Step three, create a payment wallet. And voila, just like that, you've entered a world of access to limitless customers in need of your service. Kaya Help, limitless possibilities.
Welcome back to the Crossfire. I'm Sheriff Quadri. Health Thursday um, this morning. Dr. Jai, we're having a conversation before we went on that break. Let's delve into it. Okay. Yeah, we, he was talking about genotype. Yeah. yeah and um, genotype on its own does not um, lead to infertility. But, of course, um, w when we talk about genotype in this environment, we're yeah. talking about sickle cell disease, mm -hmm. finally. Mm -hmm. And that is only transmitted from two people who are carriers, AS, AS. Mm -hmm. And so... IVF has offered us the opportunity also, which I'm not still promoting that two years people should get married. Yeah. If they don't want to get married, it's okay. But mm -hmm. if they want to get married, there's a way out. We call it pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, okay. Okay. whereby we, we can, we do IVF for them, and we take samples from the embryo mm -hmm. on day five. Mm -hmm. We take samples for, for them on day five. Yeah. And then we 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 see that the we transfer only the embryos who are not affected by sickle cell disease. Okay. Because you know we say it takes two years, two years. That's right. And each embryo stands about twenty five percent chance of uh, having uh, SS. That's right. Okay. So we choose the ones that don't have that are not affected, and okay. then we we have we can have a lot of babies from such, and we've done that so many times. Mm. Okay, I, ha I have um, quite a, a ton of questions for you here. Tons, rather, of questions here. Uh, but uh, we can't take them because obviously we're out of time. But how can people um, connect with you to throw their questions at you uh, after this program? Well, I guess the easiest way is still WhatsApp. I okay. mean, Nigeria now. So, 0807 0807 Seven seven one six four zero nine is a number that you can call and send WhatsApp to. Mm. Um, of course, you can send email to info at abayomiajai dot com dot ng. Okay. Info at abayomiajai one word mm. dot com dot ng. You have this interaction that you do online. Oh uh, yes. And a lot of people get educated on reproductive health. Yeah, because you you know that's the only way to go. We need mm. to uh, so. We are on Facebook mm. and Instagram mm. once a month. Okay. And the, the good thing is that is the first one this year is mm. this Sunday at 5 p.m. Yeah. So I'm inviting as many people as that can come. It's just Dr. Abayo Miyajai. Mm. Search for Dr. Abayo Miyajai on Facebook and you can join us at 5 o'clock. Mm. You can also do the same thing on Instagram. Right. We'll still also uh, feature it on Instagram. Right. Doc, it's still the same. Dr. Abayo Miyajai. Dr. Abayo Miyajai, we have to go now. Thank you so much for coming on the program. My pleasure, Shai. Always a pleasure um, taking from your knowledge and experience. Uh, always a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you so very much. I'm Sheriff Quadri. That's our show today. I'm online at Sheriff Quadri across all social media platforms. But I'm not going anywhere yet because um, Daily Digest is next. And we'll talk about President Buhari and his succession or successor comment. Stay here on Nigeria Info. Call 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk.